Good morning, fishy folks. Michael from Michael's Fish Room here. Don't forget to check out michaelsfishroom.com. New lower prices, some really cool guppies, and you could buy a t-shirt if you wanted. Today we're going to talk about box filters. Why? Because I talk about box filters a lot and they're old school, so a lot of people don't know about them. I've done videos on sponge filters, never done a video on a box filter, and they're very simple, very inexpensive, and very effective. <clears throat> what I really like about them is they're very customizable, which is, you know, kind of good for me. Now, we'll show you the parts of a box filter. This is a corner box filter. You can see it's not shaped like a box, uh, but here's one, a little bit different design that's sort of shaped like a box. And I have ones that I got uh, from the auction that are big cylinders. You can buy those at Gemco. Um, so, and anyway, anything I talk about today, there will be links to Amazon in the description below for you to buy um, almost anything, not everything, but a lot of the things. Links below, check them out, click on them, buy lots of stuff. I make, you know, a 13th of a penny or something, and it all adds up. So let's talk about the parts of a box filter. You have the box filter. You have the lid. You have the inside piece. That's it, three pieces, right? How does it work? Well, you put media in here, uh, biological media, lava rock, which is what I use because I have it on hand, it's cheap. But any of the, the uh, bio media that you can use for a canister filter, or even <clears throat> some people put them in um, hang on back filters, you can put in here as much as you want. That's what I like. You can put a little, you could put a lot. And then you put some sort of mechanical filtration on top. I happen to use polyfill, which uh, you can buy in a lot of places. There'll be a link to this in the description below. This whole bag is like six bucks. I've had it for two years. And look, you can see how much I've used. Uh, you can also add carbon or any of those other uh, cleaning, chemi pure, whatever those things are called. I've never used them, I don't know. You can also put them in here. You could, if you're an artiste, which I am not, you can cut a piece of uh, pinky floss or something, cut the circles out. You could put that on top. I don't do that because I don't have time. So how does it work though? That's what you, you want to know, right? Well, first I'm going to put some biological media. I like to use lava rock because uh, it's cheap and it's very porous. There's like a gajillion little tiny holes in here where all the beneficial bacteria can live. Uh, some of the problems with lava rock in these filters are you might not have pieces that are small enough to get in all the nooks and crannies. Just go outside, take a small hammer and, and they break. You might have to hit them harder than, you might have to go whack, 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 but they break. For those of you that didn't hear that, that's whack, whack, whack. So this is about, see this is about as much as i might put in there i might add another small piece over here but whatever then you take some of your polyfill which is cheap like this much which is a mechanical acts as mechanical filtration but also biological because the the good bacteria will live there and you shove it down as far as it'll go and then if i can find my lid you put your lid on and here's how it works. You put a air line in here. It pushes air down underneath here. See those grooves? And then bubbles come up through the little chimney, the little bubble smokestack, if you will. And that creates lift. And that lift is what creates the mechanical filtration. That's how water goes through there. And the mechanical gunk in the water will get caught through these little grooves up in here and then caught all up into your polyfill. And then once a month, once every two months, once every six weeks, once every week, whatever you decide is best for you, you take the top off. Obviously first you unplug the airline, you take the top off, you take the polyfill out, you throw it away, you put new polyfill in and repeat. And that's how simple it is. And uh, they're very effective. <clears throat> now. There are two things that I'd like to potentially warn you about. One, if you forget, they get really gunky and disgusting and the polyfill becomes like solid fish poop. So try to do it on a schedule. 
two, <clears throat> there is the possibility that fry could get sucked into these little tiny crevices. Now, I've never seen it happen, but I think the possibility exists. So just be careful if you have little tiny itty bitty bitty fry. Like most of the fry in my tanks aren't small enough to go in here. Um, so there you go. Uh, the other thing about these things, like I said, they're inexpensive. So you could add two or three to a tank with one air pump. And then you just change one out every week or every two weeks, you know. If you had to clean the media, I don't know why you would, but if you had to clean the media, you could. Um, I've never cleaned mechanical media in a filter. Hang on backs every now and again. The, um, the marine lands where the water, you know, they got the wheel thingy and then the water comes through the back. And yeah, sometimes I've cleaned those, but that's really not what we're talking about. All right. So box filter this whole box filter probably eight bucks six bucks it's a small one um i've had i had a lava rock the polyfill super cheap but you do need a air pump so there you go all right should we see some box filters in action do you want to see what they actually look like working i know you do stand by all right fishy folks let's look at some box filters but before we do that we got to say hi to han and then there's Leia in the back. And uh, Jordan from Scotland told me I need to name that ginormous pleco. He suggested either Han or Leia. I mean, I'm sorry. He suggested either Jabba or Chewy. And I'm going with Jabba the pleco. So everyone say hi to Jabba the pleco. Hi, Jabba the pleco. All right. Box filters. There's one of those canister box filters. Um, they're originally from Gemco. I got them at the auction. Um, but I forget. They're pretty cheap. I think they're like five bucks or something. Um, and you can see all the media in there and then a filter that came just like that the filter pad was already cut it had all those little rocks in there <coughs> so um, I didn't really change anything I just added it that's one of the corner box filters you can see all the poop near it that's uh, because that's how it works it creates a suction um, or a little bit of a, a, a vacuum and it it brings all the um, poop and dirt and stuff to it you might be saying to yourself what's that little black disc that is what the uh that filter sits on except you can see the tabs broke off and i just didn't feel like taking it out of the tank drying it off blah 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 <clears throat> to glue it so it's just sitting there and i haven't taken that out because i'm lazy so that corner uh box filter definitely needs to be changed the uh the media needs to be changed in it it is a maintenance weekend if possible, I will be changing that out. Uh, you may be saying to yourself, why do you have that sponge filter in there? Well, a couple videos back when I got these filters, I wanted to switch them all out and I'm gonna be using those sponges in the ponds outside. Um, and I'm just leaving them in here so they have some beneficial bacteria on them. Quick lesson about beneficial bacteria. You could put 100 filters in here. There will be the same amount of bacteria on those 100 filters as if you have one filter in here. Why? The beneficial bacteria only grows as much as their food source. Their food source is waste from the fishies. And so unless you completely overfeed, the beneficial bacteria will pretty much be the same amount. All right. There are some box filters right there. Uh, I have a couple different styles. There's one of the Japanese box filters I have. They work pretty much the same. They just look a little cooler. That one obviously needs to be cleaned out. I have legitimately three in the Pleco tank because I overfeed the bejesus out of this tank. And uh, like I just changed, that's another Japanese box filter, that square one right there. That one was cool because it came with a preformed like sponge that after a year disintegrated. So um, I'm going back in two weeks to Japan. I may buy some additional media or uh, some other things just to try out, but I just filled it with polyfill. And then there's a, a, a jumbo from uh, Gemco and there's another corner filter that needs to be cleaned. And you can see the L144 lemons, which I lost the race of breeding to Mike from Mile High Plecos. Of course, this tank needs to be cleaned out. So I think that's about it. I mean, I have other box filters like there's one in here. There's a corner one. You can see I use them as much as I, I can. Ooh, the long fins are out. Look at the long fin plecos back there. Sorry, something shiny. I got to go look at it. Um, I do have them in many times. Like here's one with guppies. So, you know, and you can see that's exactly how I made it 
in the how-to part of the video. So, all right, fishy folks, let's uh, let's end it here. Why don't you guys go ahead and check out the website, michaelsfishroom.com. Buy lots of stuff. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Hope everyone has a great day, and uh, we'll see you soon. Anyway, <coughs> good morning, fishy folks, and happy Saturday water day. I don't know what we're going to call Saturday, but we're doing a Saturday video this week, and I am talking really funny like I am a robot. My name is Michael from my... No. Good morning, fishy folks, and happy Saturday to you. Don't forget to check out michaelsfishroom.com for new lower prices on guppies. There's some other stuff there. You could buy a blue t-shirt. You could buy mollies. Mm, no. Good morning, fishy folks. Happy fishy weekend to you. If in the Northeast, you probably will be inside all weekend because it's supposed to rain like the floods. What does that mean? Rain like the floods? I don't know what that means. <laughs>